My name is Maria Marks, and I am part of the investor relations team at Massive Capital. I've got Jasmine and Candace here with me, and they're going to help us talk about what happens after an investment. So um, we'll get started. We have a disclaimer that I'd like to show, just saying that we are um, not attorneys, we're not CPAs, just here to present some information that we know. Uh, we've got a big team at Massive now. We've got jumped on. We've got a lot of people who've come on board, some Realty One partners, some old Massive Capital people, but we've got a bigger team, a lot going on. A lot of um, a lot of our team is in Austin, Texas right now, and that's why we've got the group here today. Love this slide, just showing um, some of our Realty One partners deals, how much they have under management and how much Massive has under management. It's just exciting to see that. Also, where our Massive Capital deals are located, um, what are some existing assets and some locations that we are in in North America. Some markets that we are looking in. But really what we're here today is you've invested in real estate, now what? So some of you have invested and you've gone through the process where you've learned about the deal, you've heard about the team, you've trusted the team, you've read all the documents, you've invested your money, and now what happens? That's the biggest question I get from investors and that's why we want to talk about that today. So what happens? You might see something that looks like this, a big, we closed sign, and I'm using a shameless plug. Since Trevor isn't here, I have to use his shameless plug words. You might see something like, hey, we closed, or, or the raise is done, or something along those lines. Or maybe you'll see something like this, where it says, uh, we closed, but there's still three spots left. And again, another shameless plug. If you still didn't get into that deal, you can scan that QR code. But you might get something that says, we've closed. And what does that mean for the general partner team? That means we start going to work. And that means as a limited partner, you might not see what goes on day to day at the property that you invested in. So I don't know about you, but this slide is so important when you are looking at deals or you being presented a deal. This is from our property called Amberwood, and we had it in our investor deck when we were presenting the deal because it had the business plan kind of planned out from month zero to three years out, um, even, even longer. So this slide is so important because it shows what we're going to be doing. And this is what I like to reference back to, to make sure that we are still on the same timeline that we projected. So we talk about, um, we talk about what we're gonna do when we first take it over and even what we're going to do a few months out. So the takeover process is part of the uh, general partner team of the asset management team plus the property management. The asset managers are part of our general partner team and they manage the property managers, which are the people that are at the property from day to day. And that takeover process from the we closed email to when you first get an update takes about a month. And in that month, the, um, the asset management team and the property managers, they're trying to figure out what's going on in the property. Um, maybe you guys have done this before when you sell a house. You make sure that the house looks all beautiful for all of these potential buyers to come in and see the to see your house. And then you sell your house and then you don't really care about fixing things anymore. If the roof is bad or the water heater goes out, you're not going to put money into it because you know there's someone around the corner who's going to have to add money to it. So that's kind of like our properties in multifamily. The seller had it all nice and pretty when we all came in and we all looked at it. Now that we bought it, they're not gonna really care about that property anymore. So we have to become a detective and figure out what are gonna be the problems we have to deal with. Are there roofs that we need to fix that haven't paid? Has the lawn been taken care of? Are the outside looking as nice as it did when we first saw it? So that's kind of why that business plan is so important. We need to go and look at all the units, see if there's renters that aren't paying, 
And that because there's always surprises when it comes to taking over a deal. So we're also trying to introduce ourselves to all the residents. We want them to know that there's a new team in town or a new sheriff in town. We want to make sure that they know that there's a new portal maybe to pay and how they're going to pay monthly for their properties. We also um, want to set some new expectations. They've kind of had it, maybe they hadn't had so many rules beforehand, but now we want to make sure they know trash can't be laid out or we want the property to look nice. So these are all things that are happening in the property that us as LP investors or limited investors might not be seeing. So we're making sure that the property is the best and how we can take it over. And then we start looking at the business plan, how we can start doing our capital expenditures, looking at the exteriors of the property, and really understanding what we can start to do. We're not going to start renovating our units yet because we haven't even gotten into the property. So we start renovations maybe in month two or month three. That's when we really start taking over and renovating and executing that business plan. So then comes the investor updates. So like I said, you've got that email that we closed and now the team gets to work to get some information out to you. So the asset management team is meeting weekly. They're looking at the occupancy. They're looking at the property itself. They're gathering all the financials. They're making sure all the finances are making sense, finalizing an update and then preparing documents to you guys. So I'm just under the impression of what Massive Capital does. There might be other syndication teams that do it a little bit differently, that maybe give updates in a different time frame. But us at Massive Capital, we do our updates monthly. And it's an email to our investors saying, this is what's happened in the last month. So even though we haven't spoken in a, in a month, the asset management team, like I said, is meeting weekly. They're sending out um, information to the residents and, and gathering information to send to you all. They're um, going to make sure that you have the information that, since you guys aren't at the property, they want to make sure you have that information that they're seeing on a daily basis. So we give uh, monthly updates, and then we also do a quarterly um, investor Zoom call where we meet with all the investors, or if you want, you can come and see the property, meet the property management team, and that's your chance to meet the rest of the team. And this is an ongoing process. The asset management team is, like I said, meeting weekly. They're getting together financials. They're getting together your W-9s for a K-1. They're trying to make sure that they're executing that business plan, and that's what they're doing on a weekly basis. Now, there's a difference between traditional multifamily and maybe some new development. Traditional multifamily, I've got some pictures here. That top picture with the red doors, that's Warner Robins. Bottom picture is Amberwood. And that middle picture is Cottonwood. Um, traditional multifamily properties take about nine to 12 months before they're cash flowing and sending out distributions to the investors. During that time, that nine month period, nine to 12 month period is when, uh, like I said, they're taking it over. They're really evaluating the property, trying to implement that business plan and get you the projections that they showed on, on the investor pitch. And that does take time. I would I wish we could turn units, you know, turn all all the units in one month, but it takes time. When invest when residents move out, then we can turn a unit. So sometimes we're only turning two or three, uh, depending on the size, units a month. So that's why it takes take some time before you get some cash on cash back into your pockets. And then um, on the other side, we've got X space, and then we've got this really lovely blurry picture of Georgetown. And those are new developments. New developments are different. They typically have no cash flow. And so as an investor, you would want to know the, um, the types of deals that you're investing in and whether or not they're going to cash flow quickly, or maybe they're not gonna cash flow quickly. So as an asset management team, 
with a new development, we're managing the builds. We're managing, we're not managing tenants, but we're managing, managing construction crews. So it's a little bit different of who you're managing and what you're managing. And that all happens, unfortunately, behind the scenes. And then we have the questions as a limited partner that you would ask. And this is the part that I would love for you guys to share. And I'd love for this to be a discussion because I think we could together come up with a great list of questions to ask a syndication team. I want to be the most educated limited partner when I'm investing in a deal. So I always want to know who is our general partner team? Who are the people that are running the deal? I want to know all of the people and what they're doing. I want to know the track record of the team. I'd love to know um, when the deal will cash flow. If it's like a traditional multifamily, is it going to cash flow in nine to 12 months or is it going to cash flow in three years? Those are questions that I want to be aware of. I want to know that business plan. That business plan is so important because that's what they're doing when I'm not looking at the property. I want to know their CapEx projects, where they're going to be renovating, what they're not going to be renovating. And I want to know how I'm going to get some communication, whether that's monthly or quarterly or, or no communication at all. Those are questions I'm asking um, the syndication team. And then I want to know what their uh, returns are. That's the most important part, right? What you're actually going to be making on your investment. So those are the top seven questions that I would ask, but I'd love to hear you guys tell me what kind of questions you ask, and maybe we can help out some other people who might be ready to invest. I don't know, I'll jump in once. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand or uh, throw them in the Q and A and um, give some suggestions. I know some of you are, uh, putting stuff in the chat that we've been um, answering for you. But if any of you uh, have certain questions that you typically uh, use when you're going to be working with a syndication team, that's your go-to top 10 or top five or whatever, feel free to throw them in the chat. So Marty just threw in the chat, do you pay monthly or quarterly? He also put, what is the preferred return? Those are great questions. I hope he has more, but the do you pay monthly or quarterly? That's a that's a huge question to ask. Some um, syndication teams will give you monthly updates, but pay quarterly. Um, I know when I invested with Grant Cardone, I was shocked because I thought everyone was getting paid monthly, and then I found out we were getting paid quarterly. So that was um, on my end. I didn't ask that question, and then I was shocked when I didn't get money every month. So that's why you want to ask that question. And what was the next one, Candice? Um, what is the preferred return was another question that he um, said that he typically asks. Yeah, I love that because you want to know if there's a preferred return. If there is, that means the investors are getting a certain percent before the general partner team. And that's always good because that means you as an investor are getting paid first before the rest of the team that's managing the property? Always a good question to ask. So another um, question that was in the uh, chat was regarding to uh, these questions. What is the timeline um, that you would assign to them? When should you be asking these questions? Oh, I like that one. To, so that's a good one. When to ask these questions. So um, when you have, when you, I mean, maybe you guys, an investor are watching a pitch deck or watching a presentation like this one, for example, um, I would ask them on the call because I want um, maybe other people have these questions and I like to ask the team live, but then hopefully you can ask those same questions again on your one-on-one -on -one calls with the investor relations team. And another um question uh is when is the first distribution taking place Ooh, that's a good one when's the first distribution so i said typically we've got a nine to 12 month period that is what we see at massive i don't know what other teams um are are 
always nice to know that and to understand when the first distribution happens. Um, I have had investors ask me right after they get that closed email, when is the distribution happening? Well, that means that they weren't either listening or they didn't ask that earlier. So it's always good to know that because you might be getting updates without a return yet or a distribution. So there was another um, question. Hey, Maria, sorry. Yeah. You know, just wanted to add because uh, I also gave that question and also going back to the question of, um, I mean, every deal is different and you guys, uh, for example, just wanted to use an example, my column, one of yeah. the properties that we have, even if it's an apartment and you're supposed to get, uh, you know, cash flow by the first year, just because we have institutional money, the structure is a little bit different. So investors don't get uh, distributions until year three, even if the property is cash flowing since they want investors don't get distributions until year three. So, and then we have had some investors like, hey, you know, what happened to my money? So we have to remind them and show them the structure of the deal and how their money looks like in three years. Because for example, on that, on that particular project, they are kind of like sacrificing a little bit the cash flow where their money is almost gonna triple in five years. So is, you know, every deal is different. For example, when uh, we have new construction used like X space, there's no distributions, but it's a shorter period of time. Your money almost doubles in only two years. So that's why like, it's so important if you guys are considering um, investing, you can reach out to any of us, Candice, Maria, Trevor, I put the link, because we like to take the time to understand where you are in the journey and what you need more. Sometimes like we always say like, oh yeah, we need cash flow, passive income. But if you have a W2 job or a business, you don't really need a cash the cash flow. However, you need that your money doubles or triples as quick as possible. So just wanted to drop that out there. And I think that's great, Jasmine. That's a great point. And I also think it's good for as you're getting ready to invest that you understand what the outcome is. Usually it might be multiple pronged. Maybe it's, you know, doubling your money over five to seven years, but you also would love it if the preferred was good. So those kinds of, of things, um, we are asking you, um, and so please share with us, because when we have different deals available, certain deals are going to have um, a different structure in the business plan and, and help obtain these different wants and needs from a limited partner. I'm glad you brought that up, both of you, because I was trying to figure out how, as a, as a limited partner, I would ask that question. Um, with McCallum, there are we pay our institutional partners first before the investors get paid. So in that situation, if I didn't know that there is an institutional partner, I always like to ask um, maybe who gets paid first or um, is there anyone who would get paid before the investor gets paid? That's a way to ask that question if maybe you don't know that there's an institutional partner or maybe you missed that part in the slide, in the slide deck. It's always important to know where who's getting paid at what time because that might might sway whether you invest in a deal or not so i'm glad i'm glad you brought that one up both of you that's a great point we also have some additional questions that people were throwing in the chat maria so no one um, wants to talk today they just want to listen to me that's well funny. i got a bunch in here so we're gonna roll through them okay uh, jen said these days we're not seeing many distributions how is yeah. this different with massive capital um, it just kind of depends on the property. Each just each property is different. Um, I think and I don't want to talk about any other groups other than massive, but sometimes we we don't talk about how long it takes for distributions to happen. Um, even though, like Jasmine said, a property is cash flowing, it might not be enough to give to the first round of distributions. So there's a slide in 
um, and all of Mass's uh, PowerPoints, it kind of shows year to year what you should be expecting. And that average cash on cash number is always a lot higher than year one or year two. Sometimes it takes a few years for that property to be giving out the amount that was on that one slide of all the returns. So it's always good to ask um, when you'll get the distribution, yes, and how much it'll be at each year. So that's important as well, because it might not be the same uh, from year to year, and it might be a little bit smaller in year one than in years preceding. Great, great, great point. So um, Brooke mentioned that one of the questions that she thinks is good to ask is, do you have investors I can interview? Oh, what's I your, love that. Yeah. And what's your liquidity to avoid? Um, it says cattle calls, but I think she might capital be referring. Calls. Yeah, capital. I think it just was a spelling thing because, you know, cattle is you know, probably not the right word. <laughs> um, so for the first part, I do love in interviewing other investors. That's a huge, a huge way to know maybe the real team or maybe to see other sides of the team from another person's point of view. Um, I would, if I, if I was going to interview some people, I would interview maybe three or four different investors from different locations or different asset classes, or maybe understanding the different types of investors. Um, maybe interviewing different people. I think that would help you get a, a wider um, picture of the whole of the whole general partner team. And the second the second question, I can really only talk about massive capital. I know our our uh, deal is to try not to do a capital call. A uh, capital call is when we go back to the investors and raise more money to do some of the capex projects that we didn't anticipate having to do. Um, and one of our previous deals, the general partner team put in the money to avoid something like that. So yes. it is deal specific. We haven't had a actual capital call um, before in any of our deals, but I know that um, it would definitely be taken to the general partner team first. Yeah, and one of the other um, questions that I think kind of piggybacks off of that conversation is how do you handle unforeseen circumstances? So, and I know that's part of the reason why our business plans are very conservative and we do pad in capital expenditures and things like that um, in our business plans. And um, we don't always pay out the dividends just because we have some additional cash flows. So, um, you know, that's one of the, again, we can only speak from the massive capital perspective because every syndication team is its own general partner team. Um, but, you know, those are unforeseen circumstances could be um, a fire, you know, a tornado. <laughs> I mean, what, what, you know, unforeseen, these are things. And we basically are going to handle those situations as they come and we have, you know, disaster plan and, you know, stuff that's put in place for that. We also have, you know, a team that will assess the property managers if the property mm -hmm. managers aren't performing and, and things of that nature. So we can only speak to our team and how we do things, but these are really good questions to ask um, of uh, any team that you're going to be working with. And a massive capital, there's a lot of us. I show that slide, it's all of us with all of our pictures for a reason. I mean, this is, isn't a single sport. This is a definitely a team sport with all the things that are going on in the deal with, yes, you see the raising capital, you see um, a bright a deal with all the pictures, you see that part, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. The underwriting before we even send an offer, that's a, that's a team. The team that does the due diligence to make sure that the property is going to support the numbers that we're projecting, that's a team. The team that's the asset managers, 
who are managing the property to get you those returns that we're projecting on on our pitches of the deal. They're all different groups of people that work together. So it's not all one person. Um, that's a big thing for me. If I'm going to invest in a deal, I want to make sure there's enough people who can support each other through all the different aspects of a deal. It's a it would be a lot of work to do it by yourself. And and I know as a personal investor, I wouldn't be feel comfortable investing in someone who's doing all of that themselves being on this side of the deal it's it's a lot of work and that's why a team is is necessary so i got a laundry list of people who put in some really great questions oh, so i'm good. just going to read a bunch of them off okay. and then if you want to jump in maria at any point yes. um go ahead but um marty had a bunch of really great questions again is this a fund or direct asset deal what is your DSCR on this mm -hmm. deal at a break-even occupancy? Uh, Brooke chimed in another good question. How many deals have gone full cycle? That's a good one. Um, I think it's Noel. What info do we provide tax accountants? Um, Chris said, review of case studies, details of last projects that was done by the team as an example. So that there kind of goes along with Brooks as to understanding the team and knowing if they've gone full cycle. It's a huge, it's a huge thing. And there's, there's a lot of us who are new, newer to this. I, I am newer. I started um, with my first property in October, so I haven't gone full cycle, but that's why I partner with people who have. Um, Sanjay has gone full cycle on eight deals. And we lean on him to really show us how that works. Um, Schreier's been through some as well. Um, so just leaning on the people of the team who've gone full cycle. Trevor's gone full cycle. Senate has gone full cycle. So it's just leaning on those people who can help you make sure that we're doing everything that is in the best interest of the investors. It doesn't mean that you have to go full cycle before you present a deal, but just create a team of people who have gone full cycle and maybe who haven't. So I love that question, those types of questions. Yeah, and we've got quite a few more and I'm gonna rattle off some more. Okay. Um, on deal exited, uh, what was the average returns? Um, Adam chimed in, how is your team mitigating debt risk while holding the properties to prevent capital calls and or distributions? Um, Marty's just got a laundry list. I'm so happy okay. that he's got this list here. Um, BAM Capital returns 10% paid monthly on their ACE uh, series shares. Just put that in there. Um, Armando said, what is the equity multiplier in the cash on cash? So a lot of these, mm -hmm. some of these questions are obviously on a lot of people's pitch decks. Yeah, but it's always good to even ask them. Sometimes if you if you think it's a silly question, I would ask it anyway. And I see that Tracy's on here and she's my favorite example because Tracy has the best questions. And I love her questions. And I can't believe you haven't asked one yet, Tracy. But her questions, she always has some amazing questions to ask. And, and sometimes I think they're kind of to stump the team, but that kind of helps too. It's seeing how everyone's going to answer these questions. If I don't know a question, you know, I want to make sure I understand it enough so I can go back to the team and ask and ask them. So it's always good to ask questions and always good to have a lot, even if it's on the pitch deck or you've something that you've seen, like sometimes it's good to re-talk about that in the question and answer portion. Yep. So a few more is what is the minimum investment? We get that a lot. Uh -huh. um, uh, do you have a monthly cash flow deal? Um, that's Ooh. one. Those are these are part of the Q and A's that we go to because one of the first things we ask is what are you looking for in mm -hmm. a property and that kind of thing. So that would answer that. Um, let's see. And at um, massive, while you're looking at that, at massive, we don't have a monthly cash flow deal. Uh, right now. And we haven't um, in all of our deals that we've we've done so far. We haven't. I'm not going to say never say never because you never know. But um, the ones that we've done, we don't have monthly cash flow. But that's yeah. a good question to ask. It really kind of understands the team um, and understands how each team is doing something. Like I, I always bring up Grant Cardone. If you're an accredited investor at Grant Cardone, you get monthly cash flow. Right. So it's a good comparison. Now, Tracy asked, how quickly, yes, Tracy. 
how quickly uh, would up how quickly would you update the LP partners on an unforeseen circumstance slash bad thing happening at the property? Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> so, and she has a follow up, so I'm gonna get them both out okay. there. All right. What are your internal processes slash procedures in resolving conflict issues amongst the general partners? Ooh, that's a good one too. Okay. So um, amongst the general partners, well, we just had a call with our Amber with general partners, for example, and we get on a call, we talk about everything that's going on, and we let, make sure everyone has a chance to speak and making sure that we are understanding what people are um, maybe upset about or how we can improve our communications. So it's important that any person who is a general partner on a team is still a partner. We want to make sure that their voice are heard as well because um, if you invested in maybe one partner for example you want that partner to be your advocate and really fighting for more information for you so um, we are on the understanding that we're we all have a shared goal and that's to make sure that we get our investors their money back number one and very close to or if not more than the projections that we're showing so we are all under the same understanding that we're doing this for the investors. We wanna make sure that the investors get paid and um, that helps us all stay on the same page. Um, if we do have some disagreements, we are all together and we make those decisions together. And then what was your first question, Tracy? What was the first one? It was how quickly would uh -huh. you update the LP partners on any unforeseen circumstances slash bad things happening at, at the property? So, so I know how we do it at Massive yep. Capital. We're like, okay. rip the Band-Aid off. Like, if there's a problem, everybody knows. But go ahead, Maria, and comment. No, you're good. Um, we did have one um, at McCallum, for example. We had... Uh, I think it was three units that had a small fire inside. I think it was one unit that caught fire from a resident and then it trickled into two other units. So instead of notifying the investors that day when we found out, we notified them after we knew what had happened. So we waited to make sure that the residents were safe that the um, living conditions were good enough for the invest for the residents to go back in. And we had a plan and what we were going to do. And once we had that ready, that's what, when we told the investors. So we didn't wanna just tell them, hey, there was a fire and then nothing else. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure we had it all together. We knew how we were gonna handle it, what we could be doing for each of the, of the residents and for each of the units and what the process was. So that was important to know to give all the information to the investor. We don't wanna give you something as big as there was a fire and then not talk to you anymore. Well, and I think that that goes to the point where I said, you want a team that, that does rip the bandaid off and say, hey, yeah. we know this happened. Here's what we did. Here's how we're handling it. Here's what it means to you. You know, it's handled kind of thing, so. Definitely. Yeah, well, you need to know because you are a partner on this deal too. Sorry, did someone? Maria, sorry, Tracy. Can I hey, Tracy. Hey. Okay. Um, I know that the fire is you can see one. Most of the tenant can see one. The resident can yeah. see one. What about those back office? Like for instance, uh, dishonesty, fraudulent financial, fraudulent transaction. How do you update the? How could you update the LP? Or Say that one more time, Tracy. It's hard to hear you. Like uh, those. Those things like back office that nobody can see, only people in the project, uh, principal in the office can see. For instance, dishonesty, dishonesty, and then the financial fraudulent transaction. Okay, I understand. So for that instance, when we give an update, we give the profit and loss statement and the balance sheet so that you as an investor can see the numbers alongside of us. That's the first thing. So there's no secrets. The second thing, if there's any like um, tenant discrepancies, uh, resident discrepancies, like someone hasn't paid or we're going to court or we're doing all of that, that gets put into our monthly update so that you as the investor know what's going on at an 
like behind the scenes. We really want to pull back the curtain so you know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the weekly meetings that our asset management team is doing, that's when they're going through saying, okay, we've got this resident that has until you know, the 14th to pay and it is the 13th. If they don't pay tomorrow, then they're going to, um, they're going in part of the eviction process. So um, those are all given to you and the investor updates if that helps. But we want to make sure that as the investor, you know everything that's going on, whether it happened in the back office or it was right in plain sight like a fire. Anything that's happening, you should know. Hope Thank that you, Mario. See, I love Tracy's questions. She's always got good ones. So I got to the end of the list finally. I was like no rapid way. fire there. <laughs> Well, good. I, I hope this helped you guys kind of understand the questions. We get questions all the time as investor relations. And and sometimes um, people think that it's the first time we've been asked that, but it's not. So I always like to make sure that you guys know what to ask. No question shouldn't be asked. If you have any question in your mind, you should be able to ask it. And know that if the team can't answer it, then hopefully they'll go and get the answer and get back to you. Because that's the most important thing. Yes, you are investing in a hard asset like an apartment complex or a plot of land that's going to become an apartment complex, but you're also investing in the team. And that team is going to be the, the advocate for you and really you know, working for you and for your money. So it's important that you have that trust and that connection with that investor relations team. Oh, I got another, I got okay. another question that just popped in like last minute. Uh, how is Massive Capital's track record? So I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that, but- I can, I think I can answer this one. Okay. So Massive Capital is in its 14th deal. Um, in the past year and a half, almost, nope, yeah, year and a half, we've done 14 deals. So we haven't had any that have gone full cycle. We did have one property that we've given out our first uh, distribution on. And uh, we, in our projections, we projected it was going to be a 1.6% annualized in year one of a return. We ended up giving 4% because the property had done even better than we had projected. So that's a great thing to share and showing that our properties are doing really well is awesome too so we can show what our distributions have been but we haven't been, we're not able to show a full cycle deal because massive capital as a whole hasn't been through a full cycle deal but the okay. members have. yeah i wasn't sure if that's what she was getting at or not so i hope so okay <laughs> okay so Anything else? This is for you guys. Oh, I, want to I, make got, sure. Bri Go I got Bridget. Will this be recorded and shared? Yes, of course. Yes. Earlier, I um, responded to somebody about how we always send out the recordings and the information um, afterwards. So don't anyone worry about that. If um, you were on the call or you registered, you'll you'll get the information. Perfect. Anything else? Yeah. Any other questions that anyone has wanted to ask? We can, because mostly the rest of the presentation is, um, again, if you wanted to, oh, maybe I can't even show. If you wanted to invest, this is an opportunity we have right now. And then questions. So I'd really like to talk to you guys, see if there's anything else you guys would like to know. You don't have to just hear me talk the whole time. <laughs> I will keep talking, though, and if there's no one who talks to me, that's the problem. Your voice is so pretty, though, Maria. We like yeah, I'll talk to you, Maria. You. Where are you from? Yes, thank <laughs> you. I'm in Indiana right now. Oh, Indiana. So okay, what's the weather like in Indiana? Oh, uh, I'm an inside person, so I couldn't tell you. 60, <laughs> 68 degrees in my house. Detroit is, is fall-like, so oh, I can Oh, well, Indiana. I'm down in Florida, so it's still super oh. hot. I'm yeah. so excited. You but didn't get hit, though, with the, I was going to say, were you in that rain zone? No, or? no, we did one of these. Bang! We did, we dodged it. So we're good. We're good. So we had a category know. five hit us a couple years ago. We had all we needed. Uh, yeah, blew away my town. We've been, you know, had had a strong. Putting it back together. It's been a rebuild for sure. Adam, Adam, are you an LP or a GP? 
Uh, I'm an LP on a couple of properties. Uh, I'm a capital raiser and a GP. I actually don't really do anything on the GP side, so I hate saying that, but I did okay. my thing. So if you're um, raising capital, that means you're getting questions. Have you ever had a, a question that you didn't, that you uh, want to share? Well, I have all kinds of questions. I can ask all kinds of questions every day. Um, it just depends. I know. You know, y'all, I, I know y'all are getting beat up. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. The market's weird right now. Every everything. I'm in other businesses too. We invest a lot in businesses um, and kind of turn those around. But ac across the board, it's just weird. People are spending money kind of weird. Tre yeah, just tre trends. All the stuff used to go on is not quite right, um, you know. And so some of the folks that we're talking about, like monthly monthly distributions, well, all the monthly distributions I was supposed to get pretty much on a lot of my properties are being held now. I'm not having to put money back in. And as an investor, what also as like a business owner, like as a business owner, if my business needs money, well, guess where it comes from? So like, exactly. if y'all do a good job at mitigating that so that I can make an investment and at the very least, I don't owe you more money. Or I'm locked into something. <clears throat> well, there's safety in that. Yeah. Definitely. No, I, that most is, of my investors have jobs. Point. Most of my it, investors are like some high paying job. So that is right. a great point, Adam, that when you invest in real estate, it's a, it's a usually a long term play. I mean, there's, oh, there's it's it's a rarity that you see anything that ever cash flows right out of the gate because that's not what it's about. You have to get in, you got to find out all the ugliness that has to be like, well, for sure, but whatever, you, know, you, you cut know? through, you cut through so much on social media by uh, directing, Oh, I made all this money. Da, 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 da. Right. And like, yeah, I mean, it happens for sure. I've got some really cool deals. I've got some less cool deals. Uh, right. It's a long game. It's a long-term game. And uh yeah, I, I, I so I, I'm I like to LP. I do capital raise because of my network, but I like to LP because I I've not done anything with massive, but I know Mike and uh, Jasmine and a couple of the other people, and um, they're great. Uh, I'm pro they're professionals. They do that every day. I do I what I do every day to make money. Just makes sense. Uh, now I do want to, you know, I'm going to show up and be the, you know, poker uh, question asker, but you know, that's Hey, a, that's good. That's I love every that. investor. Okay, so. And if you're not, then I would be a little surprised. Um, I right. love the questions because yeah. if you're not asking questions, then I'm kind of worried that maybe you don't know what you're doing. Um, Brooke put in, that's why you diversify because of your yeah. point, Adam, the market's crazy mm -hmm. right now and that's diversifying right. your assets. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm not a huge fan of the stock market, so. Yeah, I'm not we're, zero, we're zero in the stock market, but we're heavy in business. We we buy equity Great. positions in small businesses. Awesome. So you're diversifying within other asset classes and other types of investments. So Brooke was saying there's multifamily, there's triple net, there's storage, there's new development. There's other ways to diversify within the real estate realm of investing. So um, if you like real estate, if you like hard assets, then there's other ways to diversify some properties that, like I said, don't cash flow in three years, but they also are only held for three years. So you get well, that's more right. money. There's also, yeah, there's also Fed money uh, against yes. like SBA stuff that will work yeah. in businesses, including real property. So you can still get your real estate on while doing the other thing. Yes. And shout out to, I think Nick has the same last name as me. Oh. He put tax incentives. Yes. And like I said, I'm not a CPA, not a CPA, but I do. That's what we sell yeah, is tax incentives. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. And I love handing a K1 to my CPA and they just work their magic and things happen. So I do love the tax incentives that you get with investing in real estate. And that's also why you don't get as many in the stock market. So that's why I don't do that. So we got another question. Yes. Kalina asked, what are massive capital requirements to join as a GP in any of your deals? And I think now is a good time to say if you have a deal, 
um, you can submit them at it's massive.capital slash. If you just go to massive.capital, there it's our website. There's a place to submit a deal. Um, if you go to massive cap massive.capital forward slash access, which I know Jasmine's been putting in the chat. Um, it's the links to all of our calls, but also the direct link to submit a deal. Um, that's the quickest way to be on a GP team if you're looking for deals. Um, maybe you just want another team to look at it. That's always a good option too. So submit a deal there. That's one way to become a general partner on a team. Um, also knowing what you're good at. If you are like Adam who raises capital, that's a great thing to know. If you are an asset manager, you've managed properties before, then let us know. Maybe we can work together on something like that. But just getting in contact with us is the best way to show that you're interested in becoming a general partner. And you can book a call. I know there's some, some links in the chat to book a call and see if there's a a way we can partner together. I know there's some people on this call who are some GPs on some of our deals. So uh, it's nice to see you guys. And if you have any tips on how you got connected with us, let us know. Yeah, and I just dropped the discovery call um, information again sure. in the chat. Um, so please reach out to us. Um, that link will connect you to a round robin and whoever's mm -hmm. available at the time you need to hop on a call. Um, one of the five of us will jump on a call with you and be happy to steer you in the right direction or answer any questions that you have. So and I'm going to jump into your comment. Yeah, Brooke. Brooke. You said any GPs, you know, open up and say how you all got connected. I did. So, I did that. so for me, what I always tell everybody is to show up in person you know, and I tell investors or people who are new to this game that if you don't invest in yourself, why are we going to invest alongside you? Are we going to invest with you and take our blood, sweat and tears and money and bring you along for the ride when you're not even showing up to some of the events? And that's where I truly got connected with Massive was my first year in this journey. I was in 19 in-person events and multiple masterminds. So for those people who don't want to show up in person to the events or they only want to do virtual, you need to at least once a quarter minimum, try to show your face and break bread and build these relationships. And that's going to be another great way to be on a GP. And going back to Maria's uh, point, know what your strength is and your zone of genius is. The worst thing you can do is go to somebody you want to partner with and be like, put me where you see me. What do you need help with? Put me in where you fit in. Oh, no, yeah. be like, now okay, you're bye. giving me homework to do. And if you don't know what you're good at, how the hell do you expect us to know? Exactly. Like, know what you bring to the table and drill down into that and show up. But yeah, submitting a deal is another good way to do it. But also showing up because we don't want to work with people that are pains in the asses. Sorry, no, sorry. It's <laughs> so, so yeah. true. Brooke is a, is a great example of that. She shows up on every call and she is just an awesome person to partner with. And I am so glad that we are able to partner on some deals with, with Brooke because she shows up and she's there. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, she's there. I love it. <laughs> you're you're like, uh, real quick. And uh, Vlad, one of the big Vlad, things, you're always yeah, there. It, it's consistency. That's what it Definitely. is. Definitely. Like uh, I started with, and I know Shariah are from Jake and Gino and me, a, a lot of you too, but it's consistency. You got to show your face all the time, not just show up and that's it and done, but constantly. And, and of course, do some sort of value add on anywhere where you can, you know, not just show up and just be, but also provide and give feedback. Feedback is huge, by the way. I, I I always provide feedback, even if it's negative, it's good. Yeah, because we can correct it. We can fix it. So if you don't just say anything, we're going to keep on doing it. And we don't know if it's good or not. So always provide okay. feedback. Well, I mean, really? Yeah, it is. You don't know what you don't know. You really don't. 
And if we are say, we are having webinars that people aren't wanting to, to learn on, I mean, we need to know that. This didn't provide you value. Let us know so that we know to not do this again. So it's helpful to have feedback, uh, negative or positive. We we take it all. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Vlad. That's a great well, point. Well, real quick, I'd like to say well, like what, <clears throat> what uh, Brooke said. I mean, we're, anything worth anything big is a team sport. And so yep. I've got a team of hitters around me. At all times, they do what they do well. Uh, we don't really bleed in each other's spaces too much. Like yep. we offer insight, but then at the end of the day, if somebody's just like Adam, that's a bad idea. It's a bad idea, uh, and I go, okay, cool. It's not my lane. Uh, so yeah, just across anything I've ever dealt with, knowing what your strengths are, digging into your strengths is way better. I know it feels good to go. I'll do anything, <clears throat> but all I hear is, you know how to do nothing. That is such a good point. You know how to do that. Like I, I'm, I appreciate it, but like, yeah, learn how to do something and come back to me. Like so, just that part. Definitely, job, I like bro. the team of hitters. I love the team of hitters. I might use that in my next one. Uh, I wanted to say if I could have for a of second. Course. So I remember how I met. Uh, first and foremost, I met Trevor. Uh, he came to my meetup. I host a meetup for Multifamily Investor Nation here in Atlanta, Georgia. And Trevor showed up and he was just uh, a go-giver, the type of person that just gave all his information, uh, participated in the meetup, uh, brought a lot of energy. And then he's like, Carlos, you got to meet Mike. <laughs> he's like, if Mike is coming to Georgia. You got to meet him. He's a lot of fun. You're going to love him. So I go over here. We met Mike, his son, who's incredible, too. And wow. you got to love. I mean, Mike is the kind of guy you just got to love Mike. Right. So uh, we have a great photo together over there. Uh, you get, um, see the photo on uh, Mike's LinkedIn. Great photo of like the whole group. So they're just amazing guys. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, proud to be part of this group. So thanks. So I, I want to throw a teaser out because you mentioned Mike and, and Kyle and Trevor. Um, we're, we're collaborating and putting together a massive capital syndication book. And I just did the interview with the, with the four principals. And then I'm in the process of interviewing the rest of the team. But stay tuned for our story and our syndication story and how all of you guys have been a part of this, this fantastic gazelle right lead in, you know, syndication team, because that's exactly what it is. It's the story of, of networking and team playing and staying in your lane and all of these things you guys are talking about. So it's just fantastic. And showing up because here, yes, you meet people on Zoom, but you meet people at events as well. Half of our team is at a meetup, half are here. And it's it's great to be able to meet and connect with more people because you never know where those connections are gonna are gonna go. Never know with showing up, being on these Zooms, mm -hmm. asking questions and talking, you never know what's gonna happen. I mean, we we might be part Adam and I might do a deal together just because of this this conversation. You never know. And I love it. I love that that's where this could go. Um, anyone else? Anyone else want to share? I know we've got like five more minutes, but it was cool hanging out with you guys tonight. I hope we provided some information and hopefully the next time you go and and really interview a team before you invest, I hope you have a lot of questions that you can ask. I hope you stump those people because I, if I were you, I'd want to stump them because I like to get those sometimes. So it's good. No one else. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We are here every Wednesdays. Next Wednesday, we have another amazing topic that I don't even know, but it's going to be great. So I hope to see you there. Um, Tuesdays, uh, this coming Tuesday, September 5th, we have uh, She, which is our women's group. Uh, she builds, she owns, she invests. She's me and she's you. And I hope to see you there. You'll see me, Candace, Jasmine, Brooke, and Angela will all come together to talk about um, what she means to us and why we are a group of women trying to 
just become the best versions of ourselves. So we've got that on Tuesdays. I hope to see you all there. If you have um, any questions, please book a call with us. If you have deals to submit, um, the link is massive.capital forward slash access. That'll give you all the links and everything. It was awesome talking to you guys tonight, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye.